Well, today on Nation, we're talking all about different tips and tricks that you can do in your accounting world, things you can make more money, save money, and more importantly, be awesomer than you already are. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? I hope you have a look around. I hope you enjoy everything that's there. We've been doing this for well over three years. So lots of content, catch up on everywhere. If you are one of the cool kids, certified cool kids, if you watch every episode, you thumbs up the video, like this one that you're watching now on YouTube, and more importantly, you uh, put your orders in through me, well, thank you. It is because of you that I own a brand new Ferrari Matchbox car. Uh, but thank you for that. Um, I forget, I didn't actually write down who just told me that that uh, one was, I could buy a Ferrari, but I thought it was great. Uh, if you want to be one of the cool kids, all you got to do is give me a shout, 862-312-2026. You can call me, text me, just say, hey, Jersey, everything's in my cart. I love to put the orders in. It doesn't cost you any extra, but I get credit, and that's how I buy my luxurious items and free sweatshirts that I'm wearing. But uh, anyway, a couple quick shout outs. I want to say what's up to Lorenzo Bias. What's up, man? Uh, Joshua Gutera, uh, Jonathan Richards. What's up, man? And more importantly, this week, Aaron Langley and uh, your wife, you guys sent me some cookies all the way from Honolulu. That was absolutely amazing. High five to you guys for being absolutely epic. Uh, but thank you guys uh, for doing that. <clears throat> so today, we are talking with. Mr. Dan Plata, the man you're all over. Everybody knows you, but if they don't, tell us a little bit about you. Man, I'm just a window cleaner that happens to be a bookkeeping nerd. And I can't, I don't get it. I can't explain it. I don't know why I like the stuff. Um, but I came from the corporate world, did some accounting, did some finance stuff. Back in 2016, joined Blue Skies full time. And we're doing window cleaning and pressure washing stuff. We do some home cleaning too. We're all over like actually performing the services. Um, and it just so happens I'm an accounting nerd. And when you're an accounting nerd, you just can't stop yourself. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I built all of our accounting stuff and then I started building accounting stuff for other people. And now that's pretty much all I do. We've got people managing all of our businesses that are way better at managing window cleaning and home cleaning businesses than me. Um, and I'm really just focused on bookkeeping. We have over a hundred clients now in our bookkeeping business. So nice. really cool to work with a ton of business owners and help them with their finances and like help them grow their businesses. Right. I mean, like yeah. the, 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 the tools that we give them for running their business are literally how they make decisions and how they make more money. And it's just cool helping other people make a lot of money. Yeah. Is this time of year like absolutely ridiculous for you? Cause everybody's getting that last year end kind of thing in. Yeah, yeah. The the seasonality of bookkeeping, I think, is kind of hilarious because it's the exact opposite to the exterior cleaning world for us because yeah. most of our clients are exterior cleaners. So, um, you know, springtime is kind of busy, but then like uh, once May and June hit, everybody's out cleaning stuff and they don't have time to really think about bookkeeping. So we'll be busy now through like mid-April. Uh, and then once the northern tier guys, which I'm kind of part of that group with our window cleaning businesses, once those northern tier guys are like fully out in the field, they kind of forget about bookkeeping. Then July and August hits and they're like, oh yeah, yeah we got to get our books right. Like we meant to do that. And then we didn't get it done. And now that Christmas light season is wrapping up, man, I like, I, I mean, I was late trying to get on this call with you. Cause it's like, oh yeah, let me, I got like two phones up to my ear. I got my foot up to my ear. Um, just trying to get as many people kind of onboarded and help them out and get them ready for tax season as we possibly can, which is fun. <laughs> what I like to do. But yeah. it's, uh, it's good stress. It's good fun you, stress. You're either at like zero miles an hour or 60 miles. Like there's no, like nobody call like this time of year. Everybody's like, oh, what can I do? And it's like, you have two weeks. <laughs> like, you have a lot of stuff to do with two weeks before your year closes out if you're really going to do something. So I, uh, I did think, I know you're not really in the uh, like do tax. You wouldn't consider yourself a tax person, but um, the people who uh, moved tax date when all the accountants go on vacation <laughs> after April 15th, and then they moved it. They probably all got uh, a little bit sad that they weren't on their cruises this year. Yeah. Well, I don't like, we don't do taxes for people, but everything that we do makes it so they can do their taxes. 
So yeah. we're still, we're still uh, you know, have the same time crunch. The beauty is if you do bookkeeping the right way, then you don't have a time crunch when it comes to do your taxes because you get there and you're like, oh yeah, everything's been done all year long. Oh, plus we got to make good decisions while we were running our business yeah. instead of just wing it. And now tax time is here and you're just like, sit back and crack a beer and hang out because you're done. Yeah. Um, so that's the, the beauty of the bookkeeping world. I, I think that that's, that's the hardest part for a lot of people is that uh, accounting in general and all that like book stuff. I mean, a lot of us aren't accounting nerds like you, but you know, you're a self-proclaimed accounting nerd that you got into the business and then thought it was really fun to do like the number side. A lot of us are like the opposite where we're like, Ugh, yeah, I, I got to do something for taxes. But that, that's where these tips and tricks come into play is because there's so much stuff that people leave out there on out on the table that, you know, I mean, thousands and thousands of dollars that they're actually could be saving that they're just, completely ignoring it's it's kind of a hard pain point yeah and i think um we may have talked about this on a previous podcast that we did together but i always i always like to stress the importance of cost savings and doing things the right way and measuring things the right way um saving money is not sexy like making more money is sexy right like we yeah. all talk about revenue there's a reason why why we talk about our revenue and not our profit like revenue is a bigger number and it seems sexier and it's fun to talk about your sales and your marketing and how much you're growing that. Um, but the fact of the matter is like in the window cleaning world, we tend to make 10 to 20% of the revenue that we bring in is actually money we get to keep. So as we're scaling our business, we got to pay the labor, we got to pay for marketing, we got to pay for somebody to answer the phones, we got to pay for the office and the overhead and the infrastructure that we have. And usually if we're doing a good job, we keep somewhere between 10 to 20% of that. So yeah. if we save money, the flip side of that is it replaces a lot of revenue. So like oh, if yeah. we save a thousand bucks a year on some like piddly expense, like literally less than a hundred dollars a month, if we weed out a hundred dollars a month, that's a thousand bucks a year. It literally replaces $10,000 of revenue. Cause if you do $10,000 of revenue, you really only get to keep like a thousand to maybe 2000 of it. Yeah. So when you flip that around, you realize like, man, if I just saved like this $50 thing every month, it's like literally equivalent to over $5,000 in sales to knock out this $50 a month that you're spending on a software that you totally forgot you signed up for. <laughs> um, so just the, the, the lack of sexiness, but the power behind managing your expenses well, and like those tips and tricks of what to be looking for. There's a, there's a ton of, there's a ton of value. And the cool thing is, uh, when you save money, you get to keep all of it, mm -hmm. right? It's not like when you save money, it's not like you got to start divvying it up. When you bring in revenue, you got to pay for a lot of stuff. When you save money, you just got to figure out what, what fun stuff you want to do with it. <laughs> right, so. right. And that's, there's, there's two ways to make money in business that people, like you said, tend to forget. And it's either save more or make more. Like if you can change in deductions, I mean, we talked about this and so we'll talk about it in a second, but I had an accountant one time I walked in and it was a new guy and I handed him all my stuff. And the first thing he said, as he opened it up, he goes, why aren't you an S corp? And I had no idea what that was. I was like, I, I don't know what that is. And he explained the whole thing to me. And literally within the first like five minutes of conversation that saved me like six to $10,000 a year on taxes, like back yeah. in my pocket that like you yeah. said, $60,000, I just made more because now that's staying in my pocket. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that next S Corp one is a big one. And I talk to a lot of people. Um, I mean, I'm having a ton of conversations right now as we get to year end and we're getting leads like crazy for our bookkeeping service. And that is literally one of my questions. And it pretty much applies to everybody, even the person that is doing this thing part time and, and has a job somewhere else doing something and they're thinking about like going full time window cleaning or going full time pressure washing or something like that. And they're usually even making enough money where it makes sense to be an S Corp like doing yeah. the thing part-time. So it's not like S Corp might sound big and sound scary. And you're like, Oh, I don't have to worry about that because I'm just, you know, doing this thing by myself and maybe I got a helper or something like that. Even if you're in that like lean and mean group per se, you should still be an S Corp. Like you are yeah. still leaving probably thousands of dollars on the table. Uh, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. By the way, if you're watching now on YouTube, comment down below what classification you are uh, an S Corp and you, you can talk more about it, but is an LLC, but it's the way that you actually file. So if anybody doesn't know what an S Corp is, kind of run down the options and tell us why S Corp is so, 
so good, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so, so let's split apart legal classifications versus tax classifications because they're kind of two different things. So you mentioned LLC, and that stands for Limited Liability Company. And that's more of a legal classification to like separate yourself from the business and create two entities, uh, which just means you're at Mrs. Jones's house and something breaks or somebody gets hurt and they can't sue Jersey. They can only sue Jersey's window cleaning. So if you don't have an LLC set up and something goes down that is, is you're at fault for, they can sue all of you. They can take your house, they can take your kids, they can take your wife, you know, like it's all yeah. over. Um, if you are an LLC, you have a legal separate designation. So that doesn't do anything from a tax standpoint. There, in general, you're still gonna get taxed as a sole proprietor, even if you have 10 employees, if you're, if you're an LLC and just operating as an LLC with however many employees you got, you're basically being taxed as a sole proprietor, which means, and here's where like the math comes in, and I'm gonna try not to be too mathy here, but here's how you save the money. When you are just an LLC, you're gonna be taxed as a sole proprietor, assuming you don't have an S Corp set up. Um, and what that means is every dollar of income that the business makes, and here's the important part, the, the dollars of income that the business makes, whether you distribute any of it to yourself or not, like you might leave all of that money in the business and not take a dime. And let's say the business makes $50,000 and you took none of it. You're living on ramen, like you're taking $0 out of the business. The IRS is still gonna tax you on all $50,000 of that income. It does not matter how much you took out of the business. Likewise, you could go borrow a bunch of money on the business and then pay yourself $90,000 and take all of it out of the business and they're still gonna tax you on the 50,000. Now you, you're gonna have a different problem in that case. Uh, you know, you might be losing some toes at some point uh, with your bookie, whatever you got going on. But um, point being is you're gonna pay taxes on all 50,000 of that. And it's two different types of taxes. And here's kind of where the rub comes in. This is where you can actually save the money. So first on that 50,000, you're gonna pay payroll taxes on all of it. As if you took it as a paycheck, again, whether you took it or not, and whether you have payroll set up or not, you're gonna pay employer per portion of taxes and employee portion of taxes, which is generally called self-employment taxes, if you've ever heard that term. And essentially it's gonna be 15.3% of that 50,000 payroll taxes. Again, you didn't take any of it, but you're still gonna pay those taxes. And then of what's left, so 15.3% times 50,000 is like a little over 7,500 bucks. Um, so you just paid $7,500 in those taxes. And then what's left of that 50,000 minus 7,500, you then pay income taxes on and you pay them as an individual, right? The business doesn't pay income taxes, just all the income flows to you as an individual. And then you pay income taxes at whatever your income tax rate is based on all the things you have going on in your life. So you're gonna pay full, pay, full on payroll taxes for all 50,000 and you're gonna pay full on income taxes for anything that's going on there. Now, what an S Corp does is it like harbors your LLC. So your, your LLC is technically owned by your S Corp. And now you have this like corporate shield, if you will. And that is your tax structure. You still own it, but now you kind of own two different companies. You've got Jersey window cleaning and you got Jersey's badass S Corp. And so Jersey's S Corp owns Jersey window cleaning and all of the profits of Jersey window cleaning are gonna flow back to this S Corp. But now what happens is when you're an S Corp, you technically have to pay yourself a salary. Um, and it, and it, I shouldn't say salary, you gotta pay yourself a wage. You might pay yourself the same way you'd pay your window cleaners if you're out window cleaning. You might pay yourself the same way you'd pay a salesperson if you're out mostly doing sales. Um, but you need to pay yourself something. Let's say in this $50,000 example, you're gonna take $30,000 as a wage. And that's like a replacement cost for you to do your thing. Um, now, it doesn't mean you can't take that other 20. Like you could still distribute that other 20. What's gonna happen though, is you're gonna take wages of 30,000 of that 50, and you're gonna pay payroll taxes on that. So now I've created this situation where I have to do math in my head of 15.3%. 15.3% times 30,000, which is somewhere around like 4,000 bucks. Yeah. Just trust me. It's gotta be around there somewhere. <laughs> probably, um, I, didn't, probably. I didn't do this math ahead of time. But, but so now your payroll taxes are gonna only be based on that 15.3% times 30,000, not all 50. 
So right. you've reduced your payroll taxes by 7,500 minus four grand, somewhere around like 3,500 bucks. Now you're still gonna pay income taxes on all 50 of it. Like part of it you paid yourself as a wage, as a W-2, you pay income taxes on that. You're also gonna get the flow through of the rest of the income of the business to pay income taxes on. So you're still gonna pay income taxes on roughly the same dollar amount. And actually it'll be a little bit more because you save so much on your payroll taxes. So you save about 3000 bucks a year in that example. And that like, again, that's if you're making business income of 50,000. And generally, even if you're like operating by yourself, and you're just out cleaning windows, maybe you do 100,000 in revenue in a year, and you're just operating with you and a helper, you probably make around 50,000 of income in your business. So this situation applies even for the solopreneur, the, the guy with a helper in a, in a truck. Um, and if your business is growing and scaling and it's bigger than that, this is like, that's like the minimum threshold and that was $3,000 of savings. Yeah. So it's only gonna get more and more and more and more. Um, and I know it's boring listening to a nerdy accountant window cleaner guy talk math, but all you need you, to know is $50,000 of income, you could save $3,000 roughly by being an S Corp. Yeah, that's the that's big thing. It's like, that's money back in your pocket, like you said. Like if that 10% rule is there, that's $30,000 in new revenue that you did just by filing some paperwork. And by the way, the paperwork for your accountant and your filings are gonna cost you a little bit more, um, but it's so worth it. That's only on $50,000. If you're out there saying, I got, hundred thousand dollars a year in profits that just changes now six thousand dollars back in your pocket and this is all not everybody always says oh this is illegal you're scam no 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 this is like why the government and the internal revenue service and all that puts these out there is because there's laws and things where people call them loopholes but it's not really a loophole what it is is it's a classification and a style to file so that's why these big companies that you hear you know they don't pay a lot in taxes which is blasphemy by the way but they still pay a ton of taxes but why they don't is because they have crews of people their entire job is to just see you know how do we get him to pay yeah, less understand taxes. the law like if you're yes. a golfer and you penalize yourself every time you swing and touch the ground because you think maybe you should you don't have to right like there's only certain yeah. circumstances where you take a penalty for doing certain things don't penalize yourself all the time like let the rules you know work to your advantage when they when they can yeah. And mind you, mind you, anybody who's listening and you're not an S corp. I was not an S corp for 15 years before my account said that. So hypothetically, if we still were at the 50,000 thing, that's $3,000 a year for 15 years of money that would be in my bank account. Maybe right you now. can give the IRS a call and be like, Hey guys, uh, you know, Oops. I don't know how far back you'll let me go, but yeah. this thing that happened, I kind of want some of my money back. I didn't know the laws. Could you go ahead and give me like $30,000 back? That'd be a preach. I'd take a check. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. By yeah. the way, I don't think they work that way. Cash or credit. You know, I'll take, yeah. I'll take uh, travel vouchers, whatever you got laying around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the first one. S Corp. In general, if you're not an S Corp, really look into it. The big thing is, and by the way, uh, I want you to kind of give us your uh, number and way people can contact you for the planning side of things, but you have to have a good account. And this is not a plug for you. That's not my, my intention. I didn't you know, have you on here to, to drum up business or something. But if you have your friend, which I had my dad's friend do my taxes for all those years, you get what you pay for. Absolutely. They, I got screwed so many times because of that. Once I went to a reputable, like good source, it changed everything. Yeah. I, I, I don't think good accounting or good bookkeeping needs to be expensive. I think you do get what you pay for, but there's something to be said about, um, like just having somebody that actually understands the service yeah. industry. And I don't, I don't like, I, I do because I'm, I'm operating my own window cleaning and home cleaning company. So I'm just in here with everybody. Like I'm, I'm a peer more than I'm a bookkeeper. Um, I just also happen to like bookkeeping, but, but it's even hard to find a CPA when you, when it comes to tax time that understands how we make money. Um, like it is not easy to find somebody that understands the service industry because they think like accountants and they gravitate toward, you got your inventory and you got your widgets and you sell these things and they pay you money for the thing that you produced. And we're just selling labor. We're selling time, right? We're, we're not the, the normal course of business. So it just helps to find people that actually understand how we make our money. I think that's super important. Yeah, um, that, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say that that does, that makes a big difference. 
uh, just in the understanding because then there's so many codes out there and like fancy, you know, this is and thous and everything else that, you know, the legal mumbo jumbo that if you're specific in an industry, then you know that specifics. If you're just a broad across the board type thing, then there's a lot of uh, uh, tax things that don't actually apply to us at all because we're in kind of our own sector, sector when it comes to a service. Yep, yep. Um, all right, I got a couple other tidbits, uh, a couple quick hits, and then I got uh, a thing that everybody needs to go get for free. Yeah. Um, and it's not like a plug or anything. It's just something I already built and everybody can go get it. Um, so uh, S Corp is a big one. We hit on that. You got to like make sure you're running that by your CPA. There's a really good chance that you should be an S Corp going into 2021 here. Um, yeah. It'll very likely save you hundreds, if not very possibly thousands of dollars that again, it's just money saved. You don't have to share it with anybody. It just literally goes into your pocket. Um, the second one, and this one, like embarrassingly, I didn't that now I didn't go 15 years, Josh, but I went like quite a quite a few years <laughs> without knowing that um, you can get a tax credit for fuel used for equipment. Um, so now, like fuel used in your in your work trucks, you don't get the tax credit for, but fuel used in your power washers or whatever else you're running while you're out there. Um, if you're in the lawn care industry, right, you're running a lot of tools and equipment and stuff like that. So fuel used in any other tools, you can get a tax credit on. Huh. Um, and so now don't like that can seem very cost prohibitive to even go get because how can you tell how much you spent on this fuel versus that fuel? You don't need to like find every penny of it. Um, you can calculate it and estimate it like wait till the end of the year, kind of look at roughly how much fuel these things use in a given day calculate how much your fuel expense was for the year and say 5% of my fuel was this or 10% of my fuel was this. Um, we use gas cards. And so I can see pretty quick based on our gas card usage for the last year, how much non-oxygenated fuel we bought. That's the equipment fuel, right? Yeah. Um, so there's ways to get that number. And that's a tax credit like that. Again, that's just money literally right back in your pocket for going through and breaking that out. Now your CPA could probably help you estimate that. Um, and as long as you're doing some sort of decent bookkeeping, you can kind of tell what you spent on fuel and get a percentage. So make sure you're yeah. breaking your fuel percentage for tools and equipment out from your vehicle. Not every time you spend money at the gas station, but at the end of the year, come up with a way to break that out. And it just needs to be like mathematically directionally correct, I'll say. Um, mm -hmm. And let me, let me ask you one question here when it comes to this, because you said it doesn't have to be absolutely specific. And I've heard this rule and tell me if this is horrible or if it's good, but I heard the rule that anything you do tax wise needs to not pull a red flag. And that's what you're going for. Not necessarily specific because for the most part, if you were specific down to the, the penny and you had receipts on everything, does that even come into play or do they just want you to be more as close as you can kind of be? I mean, everything has like a materiality rule to it that if it's, if it's, if it costs more to get that level of detail than it does to, to even like pay for the thing, then it's just not worth getting right. Yeah. So now it's always a judgment call and that's kind of the tricky thing, but I'd say the, the, the rule that the IRS uses is, is not like a black and white rule. And so it's hard to say where that line gets drawn. If you get audited, it's going to depend on how cranky that auditor is um, yeah. and what they want to put you through the ringer on, which is why you suck up to them and you just behave really nicely and whatever they ask for, you'd be very helpful. Um, but I think in general, that principle applies that you, you, you need to have a mathematical way of getting there, right? Like you can't just be like, oh, I guessed. Yeah, yeah. You need to say, I ran the numbers and here's my spreadsheet that shows I believe we use 5% or 10% of our mm -hmm. fuel is going to this. So like you got to have a basis for it and you got to be able to justify it. If you said 50% of your fuel is getting used there, it's going to set off a red flag and like they're looking for something that you wouldn't be able to justify, right? So yeah. just make sure you've done a little bit of legwork behind the scenes to say it's, it's roughly this either because I have these fuel reports from my gas card or because I estimated it this way that says, I know my, my trucks get this miles per gallon and we drove roughly this much on average per day and therefore the rest must be equipment, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, or just go fill up a few times and be like, in general, I fill up every day and here's how much I 
run of this and here's how much I run of that. And so it's yeah. 10%, uh, but just have a basis for getting there. Have you ever gone through an audit yourself with any of this stuff? I mean, is it as scary as it puts out there? I mean, it can be, but it's just, it's like you, you build your own story, right? So um, we've gone through one at Blue Skies and now we're like, we don't keep, I'm not diligent about keeping receipts at all. We, it's just too much of a pain in the butt for our multiple locations to like have every receipt to the penny. So we trust our QuickBooks that we have a digital transaction of everything. And so, and we know like, we're not like the big flag would be if you're blending personal and business stuff, and all of our stuff is on separate business cards. Everything is a separate business transaction. So we're not missing anything. We reconcile our accounts every month. Like we know we have everything. Um, where, and so like for sure do that. Don't like business personal, totally separate. Separate bank accounts, separate credit cards, whatever you've got, make sure your business is totally separate. That's where you would get pinched if it looks like you're accepting cash and not depositing it. Or right, if it right. like, if you're, if you're cutting corners and you clearly know you're cutting corners, like that's what they're looking for, right? If, if you're, if you traveled and you've spent money on food here, but you, you claimed it as, as, or, or you weren't traveling, but you called it travel meals instead of meals and entertainment, it was 50 bucks. Like, yeah, they might be like, Hey, this is only this much deductible and this is this much deductible. Um, but if it's not like flagrant, you really don't have a whole lot to be worried about. And when the auditor goes through, they're going to ask you for certain receipts, but not all of them. And so when they do what our process has been, we're just going to request it from the vendor at that point in time, because everything is digitally backed up now. And so, yep, send us the list of receipts you need. And we're going to start, we're going to do the legwork then to chase down the vendors and get the receipts, but we're not going to spend a bunch of time, you know, every single day tracking receipts. It'll, yeah. it'll be less time to, to go get it later. That's kind yeah, of how yeah. we've split it up. Um, there's, I, I won't get in the weeds anymore. I know there's certain cases where you probably want to keep it because it looks goofy or you had to reimburse somebody for something. So the digital transaction doesn't show where it was that they yeah. bought something, whatever, but it's, it's, um, it's the, the unique situations where you probably want to keep them, not all situations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, touch a little bit on uh, interest payments. I know we talked about that a little bit too. Guys are having equipment finance and things like that. Uh, what can they do in those realms? So um, one of the things that I typically see when I take on books for a new client is that they haven't been splitting up loan payments. Um, when they have something financed, there's, there's what's called an amortization schedule. And that shows for every payment that you make, how much is paying down the loan and how much is interest on the loan. And it's just like if you buy a house, right? You have your mortgage payment. And a portion of that payment is probably insurance stuff and a portion of it is interest. And then some of it is paying down the value of the loan. Now, the value of the loan pay down is not an expense. It's not tax deductible. Like you borrowed money and got it and you paid it out, but it's never hitting your profit and loss statement. It's not part of your income. It's just you borrowed money and you got to pay it back. Yeah. But when you pay it back, typically that lender wants some money on top of it to make it worth their while to have given you the money in the first place. That's their profit, right? And that is interest and that interest expense is tax deductible to you. But if you're not going through the time to split that out, it's not hitting your P&L, it's not uh, reducing your income and you're missing the tax benefit of that interest. Um, yeah. You hear a lot about like the tax benefits of owning a home because you can deduct all that interest expense on personal taxes. Now it got a little different with Trump's tax laws and just huge deductions off the top. So it kind of made it irrelevant, but historically it was always really beneficial to be a homeowner because you generally had a mortgage. You generally had like thousands of dollars of interest you paid. And it's kind of the same in business. Like if you've got loans paying thousands of dollars of interest, make sure you're reducing your business income by that interest to get the yeah. tax benefit of a huge deduction with that interest. Now you touched on Trump and I want to go off a little bit, but with the new president, is there going to be that many changes for small business? Do you think, do you think that it's going to be, uh, a heck of a difference from when the last four years have been? Tax I don't know. Wise. I, it's so hard to tell. I mean, like Biden clearly wants to tax the heck out of stuff. Um, and so as a small business owner, I'm like, ah, like, no, don't like, don't, like I get the benefit of taxes, but don't take my money. Like take yeah, your yeah. Money, don't take yeah, my yeah. money. Um, and so it, I, like, it's hard to know right now the extent of, um, the, the collateral damage, if you will, to the small business owner of what's going to get taxed 
differently or taxed higher. One of the huge things under Trump that was super helpful to all of us was the 179 deduction, which meant if we bought equipment like less than a million dollars, which I'm thinking there's nobody in your listening audience that's probably spending a million or I think it was even over a million. We'll say if it was- If they are, call yeah. me and let me put your orders in. So continue, yeah. continue, continue. But, but if, you know, like trucks, uh, uh, water fed poles, whatever it was, if you were buying big pieces of equipment up to a million bucks, they would allow you to fully deduct it in the first mm. year. Which means like if you went and bought a $50,000 rig, historically you had to expense that and depreciate it over time. Yeah. This is not an expense on your p and it's a capital asset. And you get the tax benefit over the, the long run. Under Trump's tax laws for the last four years, we got to take a 179 deduction, which basically meant like we get all that right now. Um, right. So to that point, I don't know when this podcast is going out there, but if you're watching this thing live, you got two weeks to uh, try to get that 179 deduction on something you buy this year. So make sure you get it. Buy um, something big, yeah. Yeah, buy, buy a water-fed pole from Jersey so that you can get yeah. that 179 deduction on it. Um, right. But but I, I assume that'll go away. I, I don't know. Um, it, no one actually a, knows. Yeah. yeah, I mean, as a small business owner, it's a little bit scary because Trump was like just so pro-business that, yeah. you know, it was, it was easy to be like, yeah, I'll take more of that. I'll take more of that. Um, it was a great four years for uh, businesses. Yeah, we might, then, we might you know, and, and I don't, I'm, I'm not like a huge political advocate either way, but it's just somebody that, you know, runs a small business and wants to know the impact to me. My guess is like, there's gonna be a negative impact to the small business owner from a tax perspective. I don't know how much it would be. I'm not gonna say that that's a bad thing or a good thing in this grand scheme of all the things but I'm thinking about it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, tell us finally kind of about that target budget, target budget spreadsheet. Uh, we talked about that a little bit. Um, again, you guys know my goal is never to like, oh, we're just doing this as like, an, but this is awesome. It's absolutely free. Um, you spent like hours and hours and hours on this and uh, you created it. So you're like, well, why not give it away? So tell us a little bit about that. So I actually spent 10 years on it as I thought back because um, I've been working on blue sky stuff for about 10 years. And so it's kind of accumulation of everything we built for ourselves. And then in turn, we started doing bookkeeping for other people. So we have, you know, like I said, we have a hundred bookkeeping clients and tons of service industries. And so we realized we have this cool set of data that not only informs us how we set up a PL in the first place and how to measure ourselves and what to what to shoot for um but we can do it like by line item and by industry and the different line items for different industries like yeah. we know how much a window cleaning company should spend on every single line item of their PL, and we see what the ones that are doing it successfully are doing and we see what the ones that maybe aren't doing it quite so successfully and so it, like I can't just go talk about like oh make sure you know for your rent you're spending this and whatever it is right. but I kind of like we I had I always had this in the back of my mind is like I just have this like info that everybody would pay tons of money to like see what I see right and like how much should I spend on this thing um and I also have this insight that everybody's like I know I'm supposed to build a budget but either I hate spreadsheets or I just don't know how to use them that effectively and like budgeting, ew, gross, yeah. <laughs> no way. Um, and so like knowing that and me being the accounting nerd, I was like, I think I can take both things and A, create like a budget template that would be useful and would be broken down the way that you should be measuring yourself and the way, the way we use our buckets for expenses and all that stuff. But I can also just go line by line item for tons of different industries and say, here's roughly how much you should be spending on this thing. So I built that all out and then I kind of said, okay, well, not every business is exactly the same. Even two window cleaning businesses in different parts of the country are going to be a little bit unique. So they got to be able to customize it some way, somehow. So there's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pre-built, like you can go download it and I'll tell you where to get it. And literally all you have to do is type in your sales target by month, how much you want to sell in each individual month. And that might be what you did last year it might be what you want to do this year. Like just put some sales numbers in there and it's going to build itself for you. Like you have 12 things to put in. Um, but, and you might want to stop there and be like, cool. Thanks, Dan. Got it. I'm out of here. Um, or you might be like, well, I know I spend this on my workers comp or I know my percentage for this is going to be a little bit higher because here's my strategy. 
So it has a column where you can override the percentages that I have in there. Cause you can say, Dan's got this, but here's what I think. And you just yeah. type it in and it overrides my number. Um, it's my number stays there as like the target, but there's a column for you to put in your own number. And then mathematically everything adjusts to your wow. number. And you could even say, I know my workers comp is going to be a thousand bucks a month. So I'm in the seasonal business and percentage wise, if I'm looking at my revenue, like then it would say my workers comp is going all over the map, but I know it's going to be a thousand bucks a month. Cause that's what my bill is. And so there's a spot to override with the dollar amount because you already know what some of your root, like rent would be another thing where you just like know yeah. what it's going to be each month. Um, so it's customizable that way. And then I took it one more level, which is uh, there's three areas of your business that will always be like pretty unique. And you're going to make strategic decisions about how you want to operate because of, because of a bias you have or a thing that you heard or just like you're committed to something. The first one is sales and marketing. You're going to, you're going to market the way that you market and you're going to try different things and you're going to, maybe you're gung ho on Google, maybe you're gung ho on the radio. Maybe like there's, there's, there's different ways to be strategic about your marketing that are not the same across the board um, and different results that you get. Maybe you don't spend any on marketing and you're just all referrals and repeats. Um, no matter what you do, I, I built a tab where you can like build that whole thing out. Um, and you can mess with it and toggle with it. And if you like it, there's a use button. And if you click use, it pulls it into the rest of the budget. And then if you're like, ah, I don't like what that did, you delete it, not the whole tab, but just like the use button, you just take it out. And then it goes back to whatever you had in there. Oh, so you wow. can like mess with it and dump it in. And then you'd be like, no, nah, I don't like it. And then you can pull it out. The same with payroll. If you want to say like my guys produce this and I pay them this amount of commission, it does that. You can pay them hourly. You can have trainees. And so it, you can have office people, you can have salespeople. And so you put the inputs in and it tells you what your payroll is going to be and what your taxes are going to be. And then you might be like, nah, I don't like it. And so you don't pull it in or you might, Hey, hit use it. And then it's going to pull it in and you can toggle it in and out of your budget. And then the last one is assets and liabilities. We are already talking about splitting up your interest in principle. There's a spot where you can enter all the big things you're going to buy and all the big things you've already bought and split up the interest in principle, how much depreciation expense you're gonna get at the end of that year, which could change under new tax laws. Um, but if you get to depreciate all of it, or if, if your CPA says, oh, we only get 10% this year, whatever it is, you punch that in, and that even can pull through uh, into the main budget sheet. But again, it's all to to toggleable. To to toggleable. You can toggleable. toggleable. You can That's toggle a nice it. word, even if it's yeah. not right. <laughs> yeah, so you can toggle it on and off, even if you're like filling out that tab and messing with it, it doesn't mean that it manipulates everything. You get to choose yeah. if you want to use it or not. So in, in like hindsight, I probably should charge like a thousand bucks for it, but I already made it free. And so it's kind of like, ah, like once you, once you make something free and say that's free, you can't really go back on it. So, um, yeah. so just go get it. It's a super badass tool. Um, the, the website is just our normal website to go download it. It's your blue skies.com. Skies is spelled S-K-I-E-S, -E in case you're wondering, because I've seen people get that wrong. Um, <laughs> YourBlueSkies.com, and you can't miss it. It's like one of the top options. I won't like give you more of the link than that, because it'd just be unnecessary, but it's free. Yeah. Download, there's one for window cleaning, there's one for gutter cleaning, there's one for pressure washing. And if you do like multiple things, download the one that you do the most of. Yeah. And then you can, out, you can always download all of them and kind of like tweak the percentages to like your mix, if you will. Um, they all function the same per se, um, but they're all unique for that industry, how much you should spend on those individual things. So nice. Well, cool. Well, I hope you guys got a ton of information out of this. So this is one of those things that we get requests for, uh, oh gosh, a, a weekly, um, to put something together like this. And I know Dan and I have done uh, uh, a couple episodes actually in the past, but I hope this one really helps take uh, to heart the S Corp thing. That for me saved, I mean, thousands and thousands of dollars back in my pocket. So uh, definitely um, look into that. Definitely look into that with your accountant and CPA. Uh, tell us again how people can get a hold of you if they need anything else. Um, go check out our website at yourblueskies.com. Go, go get that target budget, you know, whether you think you're going to use it or not, because that at least lets me know, like you have a business and you're doing your thing. There's a little info form. So I'll have your contact info and I'm going to blast you with really pointless emails nonstop. That's all I do. That's all I spend my time on. Um, <laughs> actually I haven't sent an email to anybody that downloaded one. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> anyway. 
I'm a terrible salesperson. Like I haven't followed up with anybody that's using my thing. Um, you can find me on Facebook, just Dan Plata, super easy to find, or uh, check out Bookkeeping Beer and BS. We go live like pretty much every Wednesday night on our Facebook group. Um, and we're just always talking about business finance stuff and uh, cool situations and putting out a bunch of free content. So go That's check awesome. it out and hit me up. I'm easy to find. Definitely. Well, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, like I said, I hope you got a ton out of it. If there's anything I could do for you, if I could put supplies order in, or you just want to be awesome and give me that virtual high five, please do give me a call at 862 312 2026 that is a cell phone so you can call me or text me let me put your order in doesn't cost you any extra uh but it's like a virtual high five which we're not supposed to do right now with covid so it's like a virtual six foot distancing of of like a wink i don't know what it is but but let me put that in i would definitely definitely love that and um yeah until next week go out there be an s corp but more importantly until next week go out there and be epic